What's good guys? So last week we started a brand new series of videos where we're going to be building a complete live production app that we're actually going to launch, market and everything like that. And the idea here was to build a Flutterflow developer marketplace. So the idea is that you can build an app or build some kind of functionality and you can sell that app to other people. So you can essentially share that app and people can view and clone the app that you've built. And here is the beginning of the app that we built in last week's video. We are seeing one app here. If you click on it, you're gonna see some detailed information. And here is the architecture diagram of the app that we're building. So we have a lot of things happening. And so far, we've built these two pieces. And so in today's video, we're going to be continuing the series and we're going to be building more functionality. And if you look at this diagram here, and there's a lot of things happening here. And the only thing you really need to understand is there are three main flows, if you will. The first flow is the list of apps. And this is basically the list of apps that are for sale, list of products, list of items that are for sale. Next, we have the buyer dashboard. So if I go out as a buyer and I buy an app, I'm going to have access to it, obviously. I'm going to pay for it. And I'm also going to have a item here in the buyer's dashboard. And so if I want to see the apps that I bought, I can go to the buyer's dashboard and I can see the apps that I've purchased. And I can also leave a rating and a review. Next, we have the seller's dashboard. And so the idea here is that you can buy apps, you can also sell apps, you can only buy, you can only sell really up to the user. But if you are a seller, you can go to the seller's dashboard and you can see the apps that you're selling, you know, have they been sold? You can submit a new app, you can delete an existing app, you can edit an app, change the price. And you also see some uh, minor stats. You're gonna see sales, profits, uh, things like that. So there are three main flows, right? There's the kind of the all the apps, the buyer's dashboard, and the seller's dashboard here. Now, in today's video, we're going to be mostly focusing on this area. We're going to be building the sales dashboard here. And this is the ability of submitting various apps to sell and also managing the apps that you're selling, maybe editing a description, changing the price, uh, maybe an unlisting an app or maybe deleting an app altogether. And that way we're gonna have an ability for developers or sellers to come in and sell their wares. Now I wanna quickly show you the database structure that we're gonna be using uh, when we're gonna be building all the features of this app. We have the users collection, right? We're going to be using Firestore DB, part of Firebase. And the first collection is the users collection, okay? Next, we're going to have a purchased collection, which, which is going to be the sub collection of users. And also, we're going to have the sold collection, which is going to be a sub collection of users. And on this side, we have the apps, which is a top level collection. And that's going to have a sub collection of reviews. Now, why did I decide to make the data structure the way it is? Well, there's lots of ways of doing it, and I'm sure you may be thinking of some other way of doing it. But the reason I decided to do it is that we want purchase to be a sub-collection of users because if we go to the screen here, we have the buyer's dashboard, and this is going to list all the uh, apps that the user has purchased. And because this is always going to be associated with a specific user, we are going to make it a sub collection because it's not going to be a list of just purchased apps, you know, without uh, a specific user. Although that could be a part of it, but 95% of the use cases is going to be, you know, a user is going to log in. We are going to get their user ID because they're authenticated. And then we're going to display the apps that they have purchased. So this is a natural fit for a sub collection. And same thing for the sold. This is also going to be a sub collection because we have this flow here. So we have the user and we have a dashboard. And this is naturally going to show the various apps that are associated with this particular user. We're not going to be showing a list of sold apps. We may do that. But like I said before, 
when referring to this aspect, when referring to the purchase, 95% of use cases or 99% of use cases uh, is going to be dealing with apps that are sold or purchased by a specific user because the use cases are going to be dealing with dashboard type scenarios. And, and in a dashboard type scenario, you're going to have a user who is associated with looking at that dashboard. So these are natural fits for sub collections of users. Now on this side, we have a top level collection of called apps. And this is because we're listing a, you know, a list of apps for sale. And this is a homepage. This is a top level screen. And that is why it's a top level collection. And then naturally each of these apps can have reviews. And so if you click on it and you go to the app detail, like we have here, you're going to have some review information. Uh, this could be individual reviews. This could be aggregate information dealing with all the reviews, such as number of reviews or the average rating or anything of that sort. And because this deals with a particular app that comes from uh, kind of the main list of apps, this is a natural fit for a sub collection. So users purchased as a sub collection of users sold is a sub collection of users apps and reviews is a sub collection of apps. Okay. And so now that you understand that let's go into our Firestore DB console and quickly make sure that the schema we are using matches the schema here. So here I am in my Firestore DB console and I want to quickly make a couple of changes and these are going to be changes from what we set up in the previous video. Okay. So we have users, which is a top collection and we have apps, which is also a top collection. A couple of things I want to do is I want to change dev ID to the seller ID. Okay. Last time I used dev ID, but now I kind of standardized on seller and buyer. Very, very simple way of describing them, but also a very universal way. And so we have this dev ID. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete it. I'm going to copy it first and I'm going to rename that to seller ID. So I'm going to add a field. I'm just going to say seller ID. And this is going to be a reference to, you know, that single user, this user right here, NZW. If we come in here, NZW, and this is me naturally. This, this is the user that I typically log in as. So we have seller ID. We have all the other fields. We need to add more fields here, but we're going to be doing that later. And we also have the reviews sub collection set up here. And so we have one document, which is one review and we have rating and review, which is fine for now. Let's go into users and let's create a couple of sub collections there. So I'm going to create a sub collection called purchased and a sub collection called sold. So this is going to be purchased. We're going to do that. And the fields that we need in these sub collections are going to be at least app ID, the price it was purchased for and the timestamp, you know, when it was purchased and the same thing for the sold, the app ID, the app that was sold, the price and the date time. Okay. And the reason I have price in there is that the price can change, right? We have an ability for the, um, for the seller to edit the, the, the information about the app. So they can edit the app description, but they can also change the price. And that is why if I'm not storing price here, if the seller decides to change the price, we're going to be calculating information using the current price, but we don't need to, we, we don't want to calculate using the current price because maybe the seller decided to sell it for five bucks and then they decided to, to, uh, you know, to increase the price to 10 bucks. And so if we calculate using the current price, we're going to have this calculation all messed up. And so we want to store the price as well. So we're going to go back here. We have app ID price and date and time. So let's do that. Uh, we're, I'm going to have app ID here, and this is going to be a reference to a particular app. And so I'm going to do that. Let me go and make it as a string for now. I'm going to change that later. And so first let's go find an app that we're going to be using. So I have this app. I'm going to click here, get the app ID, go back into my users and create a couple of sub collections. So I'm going to say purchased. Okay. Uh, and we're going to have the app ID. 
app id is a reference to this you know the only app we have next we have price and let's say it was purchased for mm, let's say five dollars okay and next we need the timestamp and i'm just going to call it ts which stands for timestamp and we have this timestamp and i need to enter some timestamp so we're going to put in here and let's say it was Okay, so something like this doesn't really matter. Save. And now we have one document for purchase, meaning that this user purchased a particular app. So it's going to display on the buyer's dashboard, on the account dashboard. Okay. And so let's go back here and let's create another collection. Okay. So I'm going to start another collection. And this collection is going to be sold some of the apps that the user may have sold or maybe they haven't sold anything maybe they're not a seller let me double check yep sold i think i'm, I'm gonna go back here create a document this is going to be app id and we're gonna reference that app and let's say the price it was sold at let's say five bucks and this is ts timestamp and we're gonna do that okay let's do that okay we're gonna hit save and so now this user has bought an app and sold an app now we are using the same app id for both things which means that theoretically this user bought one app and then they sold the same app which is never going to happen you can't buy an app the same app and then sell it because when you're going to be looking at the apps uh, as a user, you won't be able to buy the apps that you are selling. Okay. So there's that little thing, but for now, I'm just going to have that there just so that, you know, for, for illustrative purposes only, we're going to add more apps and we're going to fix it up. All right. So we have apps that has reviews. This is kind of the main screen, the top level. Then we have users and different things they've done, purchased, or sold okay so let's go ahead and let's start building the ui for the seller's dashboard so i'm gonna go back to our flutter flow here and i'm gonna create a new page okay we're gonna call this seller's uh dashboard sellers sellers db you can call it seller's dashboard we can always rename it later and we are looking for a list Okay, in fact, let me take a look at what this app. So we can even duplicate this. Okay, we can duplicate it, but I think for sellers, I want a list. I don't want the grid. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say sellers DB. I'm going to go to lists and let's go ahead and find a nice list that kind of works. So this one kind of works. I like that it has an image there. Let's start with this one. Use my theme. And now we have the sellers DB list. Okay. And let's go ahead and change some of the things here. Sellers dashboard. All right. And these could be, I don't know, apps. And then we have a list of apps that the user is selling. At least they've listed. They may not be selling currently, but at least they've listed them. Okay. So let's go ahead and load this up. But first we need to delete these duplicates, right? So if we go to our list view, you're going to see the list view and you want to delete these menu items, right? So if you close that up, you see these menu items. That is what you want to delete. And you want to delete all the menu items except the first one, which is going to be built dynamically. So I'm going to come here, delete this, delete, delete. All right, so now we have just one menu item last left, and we're going to go to list view. And actually, we need to delete this thing here. We don't need that. Um, this row, we can delete that. All right, so now let's go to this list view and let's load it up. But before we can do that, we need to fix the schema here. So I'm going to go to Firestore. I'm going to add those um, sub collections uh, that we needed to do before. So we got apps and reviews and let me fix it up because I changed dev ID. And so let's delete dev ID. And I think I called it seller, seller ID. Is that what I call it? Uh, let me go back app seller ID. Let's go back here. This is going to be a document reference and it's going to be back to users. 
Okay, and I have it all lowercase. Let's go ahead and fix that right here. That make it consistent. I want to have everything consistent. Okay, so I'm going to add a field, seller ID, reference, reference. Okay, now we have seller ID here. Let's go back here and we have seller ID. Next, we have users. Let's add a couple of sub collections. We're going to have purchased is a sub collection of users and selling, sold. Sold is it? What I call it sold is a sub collection of users. And let's go add the fields. So what are the fields? I think there's like three fields. App ID, price, and timestamp. All right, let's go back here. Start from scratch. App ID, data time, document reference to apps. And price. Price is going to be a double. And we need the price and then we need the timestamp i'm gonna say ts timestamp all right let's do the same thing for sold in fact you can just duplicate it you can delete the sold the quick hack and you can duplicate it as sold duplicate sold sub collection of users all right perfect purchase sold and now each user has their own sub collection that's going to make displaying data a lot easier you always want to be thinking about how you're going to be displaying this data do not worry about data duplication you're going to have data duplication with a, a no sql type database such as um firestore db you're going to have data duplication it's not a big deal it's not a big deal at all the performance is going to be better all right so we have apps we have reviews we have users purchased okay perfect all right what do we have here Okay, so we're getting some errors because we changed things around. That's not a big deal. Let's go fix this right now. Custom functions will do that. Let's take a look at what the issue is here. Display name. All right, seller ID, confirm. All right, and then we can double check the functions. That's fine. All right, no errors. Let's go back to our app and let's go ahead and do the screen here for the seller. So let's go load this up. We have a list view. We're going to add a backend query and the backend query is going to be a query collection. And this is going to be sold. Well, this is not sold. This is kind of selling, but you guys get the picture sold. I'm going to say from a variable authenticated user, user reference, list of documents, no filters, nothing. And we're going to say confirm. Once we do that, we see you know, we see these things uh, getting duplicated. It's kind of grayed out. That means it's going to be filled in during runtime, which is kind of what we want. And now let's go ahead and, and fix this up. So this image, this is going to be the actual app. And before we can do that, we need to get the app. Okay. Because right now we are just getting, we have sold and we are just getting the app ID. So now we need to get the app that we're dealing with. All right. So we're going to go back here. And then the menu item level, we want to get the actual document from the reference. So I'm going to say a backend query, document from reference, and we want apps. Okay. And we want sold document app ID. Okay. Perfect. All right. So now we can come in here and now we can get the image and say apps. We have thumb. This is what the name of the app I'm assuming. Apps name, description description price price uh, we can format it number format let's do custom displays currency and then we have the link where you can actually go ahead and, and change some things about the app, which we're going to do in a second as well sellers db all right looks good so these are the apps we can also have the status right we can have the status why don't we do that so because you know, you are, you might have a, an app that's selling, you might have an app that you unlist, that you, you might have an app that you change something. And so let's go ahead and add some kind of a, let's say we have a column here. Let's add another field. Let's duplicate this and let's have it like a status. Okay. Now, where is the status going to be set? Now we think about a status. We need to set it in the selling right? Because the purchase doesn't need a status. It's the seller's 
dashboard, the seller's point of view, they need to have a status for the app that they're dealing with. You know, what is happening with that app? Is it live? Is it not live? You know, that kind of thing, all right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add another field and I'm going to say status, okay? And you can set this field using different ways, but I'm just going to keep it simple and just do as a string, okay? And this is going to be just a string of various statuses. So it could be active, it could be um, unlisted, it could be uh, deleted maybe, you know, stuff like that. So let's go back here. Let's add a field to sold. It should be selling actually, you know, it should be selling. So maybe we'll change that later. And I'm going to say status. And I'm going to say status is going to be a string. And so now we have the string and that way we can change statuses and stuff like that. And so ideally, this should be called selling, right? These are the apps that are selling and sold is just one of the statuses. So let's go ahead and change that. I I'm going to change that. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to say selling and I'm going to say that this is going to be users created. Okay, so this is really easy. I'm going to delete that. And now we need to do the same thing over here. So it says sold. I'm going to change that around. I'm going to create a new collection called selling. I'm going to come here and let's go ahead and get the app ID. App ID. I'm going to start a new collection here. Selling. Because sold is just one of the statuses. You know, an app might not get, get sold. So we're going to say selling. App ID is a reference. Here I'm going to hit save. Then I'm going to look up the other fields. So what are the other fields? price status and timestamp. Okay, so I'm going to come in here, price, number, status, string, and a timestamp. All right, just enter some random timestamp. All right, so now we have this and maybe we can even set the status as active. So it's selling, it hasn't been sold. It's the listing is, is active. The listing is active. It's not unlisted. That's kind of what we have. Now we can delete this one right here. I'm going to come here, delete this collection, delete this collection, sold. All right. So we have users purchased and selling, which is their, their dashboard there. All right. Let's go back to the app, purchase selling. Perfect. And let's go make sure we, we change how it's being, uh, the data, how it's being loaded up. We're going to say selling user references authenticated user that's correct confirm all right so why doesn't this close back up okay flutterflow keeps changing how how everything looks this is brand new added back in query all right no errors let's go back here we are seeing this and let's go ahead and have a link because remember when they load up the app they're going to initially see this main view and somebody can can click on a, on, a, on a link here somewhere. This could be, you know, maybe a menu somewhere, or it could be actually a part of this where they can go to the sellers and see if they have apps, right? Because the idea here is that all users can potentially be buyers and or sellers. We're not making any distinction. And so if they're selling, uh, we're going to display it. If they're not selling, they're not going to have anything. We're just going to show something that you don't have anything, you're not selling anything, right? We're gonna have kind of an empty uh, empty message that's being displayed. And so how should we do it? We can do it, yeah, let's do it as part of a nav bar. Show this page in the nav bar, and it requires at least two pages, and we're gonna go into sellers DB and the same thing. Show this page, and let's change how nav bar looks. Let's go into the settings. So we have apps, sellers DB. And let's fix it up. You can even display the label. So we have apps. This is the home screen. And for this, we're going to change that. All right, let's go ahead and fix this up. We got sellers, home and home. And we're going to give this seller dashboard. And let's say something with selling, sale, maybe sold, price, uh, money about something like this that looks pretty cool all right so now they can click and they can go to the seller's dashboard if they want 
And let's see what we have. We have this app details. All right, let's go ahead and test it out. Let's start a new test environment right here. All right, so here's the app. We're looking at the main screen. Okay, the user logs in, they see the apps that are being sold. Now we need to filter the apps so that they do not look at their own app. Okay, there's no point of them to kind of browse around and see their own apps. And we can go to the seller's dashboard and here they see the same app. This is the same app. So we need to create a couple of newer apps. So that way we can filter them correctly. And we also need to create a couple of new users that we can assign these as. But as you can see, it is being displayed. It is working. It is showing up just fine. All right. So let's go back to our app and let's go ahead and create not only a couple of more apps, but also a couple of users that are these apps are going to be assigned to us. So let's go ahead, create a couple of users. And in fact, what we can do is we can run the app and log in as another user, basically create a new user account. And so for that, what we need to do is we need to show another tab where we can show current users information as well as to log out. This is their kind of accounts tab. Okay. So let's go ahead and create a new page. And this is going to be kind of a North page. Uh, let's see settings page. This is going to be a settings page. And let's see. So this one is cool. It even has links for like order history where we can possibly display the apps that the user bought. And this is kind of one what I wanted to do. I wanted to display the apps that they bought inside their account page. This is how Amazon does it. This is how a lot of sites do it. And so let's take a look at what we have. Payment options and country. That's some, a lot of interesting things. So how about we just do this one? Let's call it uh, account and let's use this theme and my profile. Obviously, we're going to display. Let's fix this up. My profile. We're going to get this uh, from the users. Authenticated user photo URL uh, username. We're going to display the username. Uh, we're going to have display name. This is their email email and then you can have a link to uh, order history this could be a list of uh, apps that they bought which we're gonna show later so what i'm talking about is this part here right we have the buyer's dashboard but in fact what we have here is a little bit different if we drag and drop this thing right here a little bit there's going to be another screen so this screen is going to be the account screen so we're going to say account Okay, and then it's going to be linked to the buyer's dashboard, apps purchased, et cetera, et cetera. And so when they purchase the app, it's going to go in here. All right, just to kind of show you where it all fits in, going to go back to the app, display name, email, email is set up, order history is set up. It's going to be on another screen, settings, et cetera, et cetera. All right, perfect. And I want this to be displayed in the nav bar. Okay, so this is going to be an account label is account outline active. All right, looks good to me. All right, let's go ahead, reload this app. See if that works. All right, let's click on the account. And here we are. This is my picture. Oh, almost name, email. This is that account. Okay, so we have that there. Let's go ahead and do what we wanted to do, which is create a couple of new accounts. And I wanted to log out. Oh, yeah, let me connect log out here add an action auth firebase auth we're gonna say log out okay okay perfect no issues let's go reload that and then i can just create a couple of new user accounts from the app which is a lot better than doing it from the um the console firebase console all right account log out i'm back to the screen i'm gonna sign up so i'm doing i'm gonna do james actually i'm gonna say dave at dave.com create an account so now we're seeing the app but if we come here we're not seeing any apps because this user is not selling they, they haven't decided to sell any apps we come here we see dave there's no image there's no name we're gonna do that later and let's go create another user uh let's say mike mike.com create account all right so they are they're seeing that app, which is not their app, but if they go to seller's dashboard, they're not seeing anything. Okay. This is the account. 
all right so we have two users and one user has the app which is me selling the app and the other two users do not have any apps and so in that case what i want to do is i want to go i want them to create the app from the seller's dashboard okay so basically let's go ahead and create the screen so they so they can create an app and change some settings okay so let's come in here and let's add something new let's go to sellers dashboard and if we go to the list view we have an empty list widget which is very very helpful so we can click here widget type we can have a component so let's go ahead and have an empty list widget okay we also have an image and so we're gonna see we're gonna be seeing it like this and let's go ahead and create this component real quick so you you want to come here to templates and you want to search for a component that, that kind of does it and so typically you can just drag it in here okay it doesn't matter where and then what you want to do is you want to select it right this whole thing right this whole thing you want to right click and say convert to component empty list okay and so now we're seeing the component if we go back to our apps uh sellers db you can delete this you can delete it here okay because now we have the component right here and so now we can go to list view and select this component empty list okay and so now if we reload the app we should see that component that is very very helpful because it saves us from building a stack and having these if conditions and stuff like that and so now if i log in who am i logged in as mike doesn't have any apps we go in here you don't have any order so we need to change that in fact we can make this a template so we can display anything we want over here so let's go ahead and do that i'm gonna come to our component and we can make this like a template okay so we can change it around so we can select the component and we can create parameters so i'm gonna say message um this could be message uh message one and then message two and then text uh, the button text so i'm gonna say this is string uh, message two which is the message below it i'm gonna say string and i'm gonna say button text this is also string all right confirm confirm now we have all of these parameterized and now you want to click on a set from variable message one message two and this is gonna be mess button text okay and now it needs parameters if you do not pass parameters it's not gonna work so if you come in here we have this empty list and we can pass it parameters so i'm gonna say pass 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 and this is gonna be specific value and then the message is no apps and then message two you are not you have not you haven't listed any apps for sale and then button text is what's the button text is what was that button text and for the button text we can have okay or we can have a workflow where they are redirected to kind of list an app i'm just gonna have okay right now uh we're gonna do that later so if we have we have this text here we have a button and so if i run this app reload this app this test environment all right let's go into seller's dashboard and no apps you haven't listed any apps okay and you know we can change that we can say list an app for sale i think that's going to be a good idea and that's going to redirect them to another screen so let's continue working on this let's go back here let's go to the sellers db and what do we want to do well we need a link when they don't have any apps to, to to add an app and typically you're going to have a link here and you're going to have a link there so what i'm going to do guys is i'm going to come in here we have apps and we have this text add app okay so if they don't have anything they can just add this button and then we can remove the button from the um that empty list controller because we don't really need a button there okay so they can add an app this is going to redirect them to another screen where they can add the app and and things like that but we also need something that's going to allow them to edit an existing app and this is going to be done by clicking on this okay and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add another page over here and i can duplicate this right i can just duplicate this we're gonna say edit edit app this is this is the page that's going to be editing kind of app information and when they come to the sellers db rearrange that sellers db uh if they click on menu item 
it's going to redirect them to edit uh, navigate to transition default we need to pass a parameter and we're going to be passing the app ref id which is the selling document or yeah selling document app id okay and so now the second page is going to know the app id we're going to go to edit app we're going to load this app id which is probably already doing it edit back and query yeah it's already doing it so it's already getting this app because we duplicate it and now we can kind of pre-fill the data okay we can kind of we have the thumb we have the name we have everything because we're loading up the app id we already have everything okay so we can delete this i don't think we need this container and then we can go back and it's already doing that as well navigate back and and we're going to say added app so let's see where we can have that we have a column we have another column so we have a text and we can have a text we can uh we can have it over here all right so we can have it somewhere here okay so there it is we can wrap it inside a row wrap widget inside a row center this row or not center it maybe not center it have a text make it a little bit bigger and we can say edit app in fact what we need to do is we can pad the second column we can just give it a little bit of padding something like this maybe 20 20 yeah that looks better and that way we can have it yeah let's go ahead and center it let's go ahead and center it all right now it's centered okay so something like this we'll change it around later edit app now we need a button right so here is kind of the detail page we don't need this we're gonna delete this we're gonna delete that we have the button we're gonna center this button and we're gonna say save okay maybe make it a little bit smaller this button the width yeah 120 yeah that looks better and this is gonna be all the stuff we're gonna be saving so we have the description and now we need to change things about this app so this should not be a text field this needs to be an editable field all right so we're gonna come here and we are gonna say we're gonna add to this column uh text field which which is actually an editable field so here is our text field that should be next go and fix that mm -hmm. okay perfect now we can delete this we have this this is going to be the text field uh the name of the app so we want to change that yeah text app name and yeah we're going to change this also app name input say input okay description we're going to change we're going to add text container we're going to replace okay and we are going to say input app desk description we're going to say description app description app name and developer well we are not going to change the developer developer is still us this is not changeable we also have features which i'm going to get to in a second but for now that is kind of what we have we have this expandable perfect okay looks good so we need to save it and how are we going to save it well we need a workflow add an action we're going to say data uh, database update document we're updating the apps document the reference we're updating the app and we have various fields name this uh name description name description name thumb description perfect name is going to be a specific value from variable widget state app name uh description yep description from variable widget state app description all right that is kind of what we have let's go ahead and see if that at least at least loads before we go further all right so here's the app who am i logged in as as mike and my, as mike.com mike does not have any apps okay so let's say we want to add an app but we didn't create the page for adding an app so let's do that right now real quick and let's also remove this now before we refresh the app we need to have another screen where we can add a new app and that way users that we just edit who don't have any apps they can go ahead and add new apps there okay so we have edit app so i'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and i'm gonna call this new app 
new app and this is selling app right i'm selling an app and this is going to be the way people are going to be adding new apps before they are listed on the main page they need to be added and this is going to be the screen so we're going to say new app which is going to be selling new app you're going to be selling this app and all of this right they're going to fill it in right so this is the app name description and the difference here is this you know this thing is not going to have any reference so I'm going to come here and I'm going to delete. I'm going to remove this parameter because it's a brand new app. Okay, there are going to be no parameters. And this thing, yeah, this thing leads us back. And we need to fix that one right there. We need to remove it because they're not, there's no app, right? And so that is kind of what we have. Uh, they can also add features as well. We're going to do that as well. Uh, this is going to be their display name. Yep, the user who is add adding the app. So we're getting some errors. Let's go ahead and fix this. Uh, I'm going to remove this. I want to make sure there's no errors first because we duplicated this page. Remove, firm, cancel. There's property. Go ahead and fix that. Mm, all right, let's go ahead and fix it. Okay, so now we don't have any errors. Perfect. And let's go ahead and do this. So we need an image, image uploader, or it could be a URL. We need an app name, app description. Developer is going to be the logged in user. Okay, so we need that authenticated user. Um, so we need to load up developer information. Okay, so before we kind of showing this page. So let's go ahead and load this up. So if we have this developer right here, and we can load it on this level right we can just load it over here because we only need one thing from the developer and that is their um that is you know their information but we also need it when we're saving the app and so in this case let's go do it at the top level back and query document from reference we are going to say users user reference and so now we know that authenticated user here and now we can display it here okay so we can say users display name and that, and that way we're going to have it access. We're going to have it access in all cases. And so you don't really need to do it at the top level. You can do it here if you want, but it's kind of nice to do it at the top level. And then you have save and then you have save, which is going to go and save this app that we have here. And so let's go ahead and do that. And so new app, let's see if it's linked anywhere. We need to link it sellers db add an app let's link that here uh, navigation to new app okay back now okay perfect and when we are adding the app we need to add it into the database so we're gonna come here we're gonna add an action database and we're gonna say create new document and we're gonna create a new app but we also need to create a new selling app inside the users so let's go ahead create a new app name description uh, thumbnail price oh we need the price as well listed somewhere there seller id is going to be the authenticated user and that's it okay so name let's get the name widget state app name description widget state app description thumbnail we're going to do that as well once we have the the use image upload we need an image okay we need an image we need a price so i'm going to leave price out of it for now actually i'm just going to set a random value let's say it's 10 bucks let's say it's five bucks and seller id is going to be authenticated user user reference all right so that way we have at least something here so that's going to be inside the apps and I'm also going to go ahead and create another call to save it as part of the users. Okay. So this is going to be selling. I'm going to say authenticated user, user reference, and I'm going to add the fields again. So app ID, I'm going to put in the app ID here. And that way we can have it here. Action output app ID reference price. I'm um, just, we're just going to do five timestamp uh server timestamp perfect status so status is active because they're selling the app and that's kind of what we have all right let's go back here now for the image what we can do is we can add another button over here and this is gonna say upload media all right and then the media is gonna show up here so 
we're gonna say upload media right here we're gonna come here add an action search for upload media upload photo video okay allow photo we're doing photo yep looks really good and now we need to enable uh, firebase storage because we're going to be storing this data um inside firebase so we're going to go back to firebase we're going to go into build we have storage and now we have it enabled and so here's where additional media is going to be stored and so if we go back to our app you can come in here go to firebase and you have firebase storage and so you can deploy all that you can deploy those settings okay now it's all the de all nicely deployed everything is set up and it understands that we have it and so now we can go back to our app and this triggers an upload and after it's upload we can actually have it displayed over here so we can say network set from variable widget state uploaded file url look at that and now the once it's uploaded it's gonna it's gonna be on the internet it's gonna be in the cloud it's gonna have a url and that url is gonna be what's gonna be displayed here okay so this is pretty much done what do we have we have name we have app description if we come in here we have say we have two actions we're saving it both times let me fix this we have thumb and this should be set to widget state uploaded file url okay and so now we're creating two calls. We're saving it as a regular app, but we're also saving it associated with the user, okay? That way we can display it nicely. All right, so let's go ahead and see if that works. Let's come back here. Let's start a new environment. All right, so here's the app. We're gonna go into seller's dashboard. You haven't listed any apps. We need to remove this, but we can click on add an app and then we can upload the app. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go find an image. So here's the sample Flutterflow image here. I'm just gonna save it. Come back here, we're gonna hit upload. Success, and now this is showing up here, the, the image that we uploaded, okay? And so if we go back to our fire store storage and reload this, you should see uh, a folder called users. And if we upload that, we have a user ID and we have uploads and then we have what they uploaded. So if I click on that, we see the file here. And that is what's being referenced. So if you go to file location, you see this whole file location there. And so now we can fill out all the other information and we can save this, okay? So let's go call this app called, um, let's say we call it appointment app, uh, the best appointment app ever. And that's kind of it, right? We're not we're not doing the price. Actually, we're setting a, a static number, just a hard coded value. We have the developer. I'm gonna hit save, and hopefully it is saved. We need to redirect back. We're gonna do that, but let's go ahead and see if it has been saved. All right, so here we're back in um, our uh, Firestore DB, and now we have two apps. We have the app, the old app here, the Pomodoro app, the initial app. We also have the new appointment app. And as you can see, we have the thumbnail, we have the image, and we can edit this field, copy this, and we have this thing here. So it has been uploaded by the user. Everything is fine. Uh, we just need to create another sub collection in there. We need to have it created automatically. But if we go back here, well, assuming that we um, redirect them automatically, we go back like this, and now we are seeing the app, okay? This is the sellers. Now we're seeing the app here as well, right? So now we can click on it and we should be able to edit it. We can, we will be able to edit it. We're gonna display all that as well there, but now the app is displayed. And so if I log out, let's say I log out, I log in as myself. All right, I'm seeing two apps, but if I go to seller's dashboard, I only see one app because that other app does not belong to me. It's not my app, okay? So if I go in here, this is the new app, right? It has the seller's ID, and this is the old app. It has my seller's ID. And so today, we were able to work a little bit of the, on the seller's dashboard. We built a little dashboard there. We still need to do a couple of other things. We need to edit. We need to have new functionality. Uh, delete app, change status. In fact, I'll have that here for next time change status so you know 
take it off the market, inactivate it, stop selling it, etc., etc., show maybe profit sales, etc., etc. But now we have this, we have that. In the next video, we are going to be doing more things where maybe we're going to be working on this or working on this. Lots of other things we're going to be working on. So if you're interested seeing this series continue, you want to see more of these videos because I am very much motivated on finishing this app entirely and launching it. I'm very, very much motivated, but I need your support. I need your feedback. Let me know if you want to see the series continue. If you do want to see this series, like picking up steam and doing multiple videos a week, smash the like button and leave, leave me a comment below, letting me know what feature, what functionality you want me to work on next. Cause I'm super motivated to finishing this up. I want to launch this thing and I need you guys feedback so that I know what to work on next. So let me know in the comments below. Uh, what you guys think if you have any questions or concerns but most importantly let me know what i should be working on next and also like i said in the beginning of the video you'll be able to view and or clone the specific app on my patreon page as well as view and clone all my flutterflow apps as well as other apps get access to live streams q a's as well as the up and coming new series i'm about to launch called behind the scenes or behind the code or behind the no code still not sure how i'm gonna call it that series is launching tomorrow and that's gonna be a sick series lots of interesting things we're gonna be talking about very good stuff so let me know below what you guys think smash the like button subscribe to the channel join the patreon page and i'll talk to you guys in the next video